In Ortigia Royal Academy of Magic, Alto Goldfield is being addressed by his teacher. The teacher informs him of how his score on the summoning exams might prevent him from being promoted. The teacher says that performing a summoning contract is easy, and some students have passed by forming contracts with rhinoceros beetles. He tells Alto to form a contract with a familiar before the next faculty meeting happening the next day. Lilia runs towards Alto and asks him what happened in the staff room. Alto tells her about his condition, and she gets mad at the teacher. Alto calms her down and says that it isn't the teacher's fault, but the rule of the school. To be in the second year, one must need familiars for tons of class activities. He tells Lila about how he has one more chance, and he plans on giving it another shot. Alto goes into the school library and thinks about what familiar to summon. As he ponders, a book drops from the top of the shelf and lands on his head. Alto picks it up and sees that it is an old summoning book. He decides to take it with him to his dorm. In his dorm, he goes through the book and confirms his suspicion about it being a summoning one. He mentions how rough the book is, so he doesn't know what he is about to summon. He sees the magic circle and follows the instructions. Alto chants the spell, and a golden light glows from the circle. Alto is surprised because it has never worked before, so he cuts his finger and drops his blood into the circle to complete the ritual. As soon as the blood touches the circle, a black smoke fills the room, and a horned figure is present. She speaks to Altos, and he learns that she isn't a human. Alto realizes that the demon is unclad, so he closes his eyes. Alto strengthens his will and asks her to be his familiar. A golden crest appears on her chest, and Alto's right hand signifying that they have formed a contract. The demon acknowledges him and kisses him. Alto notices that his mana is leaving his body, so he pushes her back. The demon introduces herself as Vermeil. Vermeil finds him strange for wanting her dressed. She informs him about how his clothes won't fit her, but he directs her towards his sister's clothing, which happened to be with him at that moment. Vermeil puts it on and looks stunning in it. Alto explains his predicament to Vermeil as she goes through the summoning book. She understands and says that it is because his mana is too potent, which is why familiars have been avoiding him. He asks Vermeil if she is a demon, and she confirms his guess. She pokes his cheek and calls herself a daring demon. Alto remembers one of his teachers who told them how dangerous demons are. He asks her why she chose to be his familiar, and she replies that it is because he helped her escape from the book she was trapped in for so long. Alto asks her why she was trapped, and she acts mischievously. He asks if she is a bad guy and it makes Vermeil laugh at him. Vermeil stands up from where she sat and acknowledges Alto's guess. The next day, Alto shows Vermeil to his teacher as his familiar, and it makes the teacher sigh. This is because Vermeil hid her horns to prevent the class from knowing that she was a demon. Vermeil gets mad at him and shows the teacher the golden crest on her chest. He analyzes the crest and confirms that it's true, but he wonders how a human could be a familiar. The teacher agrees and passes Alto. Alto jubilates since he knows that he won't be repeating that year. Leela watches Vermeil get close to Alto, and it infuriates her. The teacher notices Vermeil being chummy with Alto and warns them. Vermeil interjects and says that the school allows familiars and humans to be close. She states the motto of the school, and the teacher leaves them be. Lelia admits that she is happy for Alto's passing, but she cannot stand their behavior. She shouts after watching them, and the teacher tells her to stand in the hall. After class, Lilia catches up with Vermeil and Alto, and asks what Vermeil is. Alto recalls asking Vermeil to disguise as a human the night before. Alto introduces Vermeil to Lilia as his familiar, but she gets mad and throws her tie on him. Lila asks that she duel with his familiar, and drops her condition to win the duel. Alto brings out the school guidebook, and shows it to Vermeil to inform her of the rules of the school. Vermeil agrees and informs Lilia that she'll do whatever Alto wants if he wins the duel. Lilia his mind goes wild as she imagines all sorts of things Alto might force her to do. She snaps back to reality and agrees to the duel. They form a pact and the duel is shown to the students of the academy. In the arena, Lilia informs Vermeil to step aside if she doesn't want to get hurt. She summons her familiar, Silphid, and says she plans to punish Vermeil. Vermeil is amazed that Lilia can summon a high-class spirit at her age, and it makes Alto realize how informed Vermeil is. Lilia acknowledges the toughness of Alto, but plans on taking him down to know more about Vermeil. Her jealousy kicks in as she throws the wind attack at Alto. Alto cowers, but Vermeil steps in and tells him to trust her more. She receives the attack head-on, but comes out unscathed. She stares at Lilia who looks dumbfounded and walks to her. Vermeil assaults Lilia by playing with her melons till she admits defeat. Lilia gets up and meets Alto. She says that she is ready to do his wish, and Alto asks that she become friends with Vermeil. Alto looks at Vermeil and tells her to do the same. The girls agree and shake hands. In Alto's room at the dormitory, 
Vermeil informs Alto of how Lilia is in love with him, but he disregards the info. He calls Lilia an old friend who gets mad at him for the weirdest reasons. Vermeil walks up to him and asks for her reward for winning their duel. She refills her mana, and it makes Alto curious as to why she does it. Vermeil tells him that it is due to her being sealed away for so long, she'll need his mana to keep her alive. Alto smiles and says that he is happy that his contract with a demon isn't as bothersome as the rumors. Vermeil corrects him that it is because of his mana pool. Vermeil informs him that there are other ways to draw out his mana. Aside's kissing, but when he hears them, he blushes and sticks to kissing. Alto walks to school with Vermeil, and it causes everyone to stare at them. He warns her not to do anything to stand out after winning the previous duel. A student calls their attention to a high-class dragon on the loose, and Vermeil flicks it away with a finger. The principal addresses the second years in the Great Hall. He informs them to delve deeper into the study of magic. Alto argues with Vermeil for sending a dragon flying with just a flick of her finger. He pauses and notices other guys staring at Vermeil's chest. After the assembly, Lilia walks up to them and talks about the rumor she heard about Vermeil sending a dragon flying. The first class they attend involves being taught how to nurture their familiars, and how the students must be in sync with them. The students are taught about demon seals in the second class. Rather than concentrating on what is being taught, Lila chooses to watch Vermeil, who sticks too close to Alto. After class, Vermeil sees Lilia accompanying them and asks Alto why. They argue, but get interrupted by two students. One tall, red-haired, who happens to be their upperclassman, and another junior who points at them. The upperclassman introduces himself as Rex, the dragon rider to Vermeil, after confirming that she was the one who sent his dragon flying earlier. The students do not realize what it means, but the junior standing with Rex explains Rex's position to them. Rex stares at Vermeil and believes that she used some trick to take out his dragon since she doesn't look tough. Vermeil calls him a little boy for referring to her that way. The junior yells at them, so Alto and Vermeil use crystal magic to trap the students. She sees Alto's crystals and tells him that he is talented. Rex gets mad at them and breaks the crystals easily. He summons Tyrannosaurus as his familiar, and tells them to pick fights with people on their levels. Lilia yells at Rex not to take them on since he is an upperclassman, but he says that this is their only chance to fight him. Rex suggests that Vermeil apologizes to him in some other way since he likes her figure, but Alto steps forward with an angry face. Rex sees that they've refused his offer so he charges his Tyrannosaurus at them. Vermeil hugs Alto and returns all the mana she has taken from him since the night before. A golden magical circle appears shortly around, Alto and Rex notices it. Alto summons Crystal and an enormous amount knocks off the dinosaur and cuts Rex on the cheek. Vermeil makes fun of the upperclassmen and he apologizes angrily for picking a fight. Lilia walks up to him and makes fun of him some more. In Alto's dorm, Alto warms Vermeil about how drawing attention only causes more problems for them. He looks at his hand and wonders where the enormous amount of crystals came from. Vermeil snaps him back to reality by nagging about school. She tells him that she can get him all the money he wants, but Alto warns her not to do anything illegal. He ponders about what he wants to be, and tells Vermeil that he'd like to be an incredible mage. Alto says that his nation's mages are classified into four ranks, gold squares, silver squares, bronze squares, and apprentice mages. He says that only a few of them make it to silver. Vermeil asks if he wants to be a gold square, but Alto says that he wants to be better. He tells Vermeil about a special rank created for magis who are deemed all-powerful and have contributed positively to the nation. Alto says he'd like to be a platinum square. Her golden crest glows, and she informs him about needing more mana. Vermeil removes her clothes and approaches Alto to pour mana into her body. The next morning, Vermeil and Alto walk to school. Lilia notices how Vermeil looks shiny and Alto looks tired. She asks him what happened and he tells her that he didn't get enough rest the night before. Lilia looks at Vermeil suspiciously and blames her for it. They get interrupted by two of their classmates, Marks Parston and Cheryl Eridescence. Marks holds on to Alto and makes him dance with him, after telling Alto of the rumor he heard about him. He calls Alto his rival out of the blue. Alto introduces Marks to Vermeil as soon as he is released. A teacher comes out and sees the students outside his door. He calls three of them into the principal's office. Office. The principal calls them top students and informs them of the reason he called them into his office. The principal tells them that he'll be picking one of them as the second year student council's representative. He informs them of the special trial he has designed for them. The principal tells them to get a fairy flower before 6 p.m. The students go to the forest to find the flower. Marks tags along with them and informs them about what the flowers are used for. He says that he doesn't know why the principal didn't call him into his office, but his maid says that it's because he's been failing academically. Mark summons his familiar and dashes into the forest but gets taken out by a plant monster. Cheryl drops out of the competition to free her master, Marks, leaving Lila and Alto. Lilia and Alto spot the flower but encounter an obstacle. 
the Cerberus. Lilia brings out an invisibility potion, and says that she'll be having the flower to herself. Alto says that she can still be detected by smell, but Lilia points out the fact that one of the heads of the Cerberus has a snot in its nose. Lilia drinks the potion and strips to prevent her clothes from giving out her location. She comes out of the bushes and tries going towards the creature. Vermeil reminds Alto that she will win if he doesn't do something. Alto snaps back to reality and asks Vermeil what she did to him earlier against Rex. He asks that she do it again, but she decides to collect mana this time around. Lilia gets close to the Cerberus and they sniff around. One of the heads detects the presence of someone before them and tries snarling at her but Alto fires an attack at it. Alto orders Lilia to go for the flower while he distracts the monster. As soon as the monster gets within the range of Vermeil, she leaps and finishes it off with a single blow. Lilia picks up the flower on the hill and hands it over to Alto. Alto notices that the effects of her potion have worn off, so he informs her about it. Lilia screams and the flower flies out of her hand and drops in front of Cheryl. Cheryl picks it up and the school bell rings, which signifies the end of their test. Cheryl is assigned the position, and Mark celebrates with her. Alto and Lilia tell each other about how hard they plan on working to not be left behind by the other. The next morning, Vermeil tries crep and asks Alto what it is. He informs her and finds out that it is her first time trying it out. He realizes that she is 100 years ahead of her normal era. Vermeil asks that he buys crep for her regularly, but Alto says that she'll gain weight if she eats too much. Alto tries questioning her to know more about her past, but they get interrupted by dragons being ridden by the student council. Chris, a female dragon rider, is spotted. Alto informs Vermeil that Rex is part of them. They walk towards the school, and Vermeil reminds him of what he was about to say earlier but he tells her it's nothing. Alto promises to give her a different crep to try on their next outing and it makes Vermeil happy. She gives him a share out of her crep and he bites into it. During PE, Marx informs them about who Chris is. He speaks of how incredible she is and how she founded and led the Dragon Riders into a position of power. Marx tells them that Chris is a student council officer and one of the seven gold squares at the academy. Marx compares Chris to him and says that he has incredible talent. Alto seems happy after learning that students can attain the gold level. Vermeil notices Lilia's mood and asks her what's up. Lilia informs her about how five of the seven gold squares are student council executive officers. Alto adds that the student council president is close to becoming a platinum square. He wishes to be her. In the girls' changing room, Lilia tells Cheryl about how she dislikes Vermeil and how weird she is. She sees Cheryl's underwear and sees how different it is from hers. She tells Cheryl about how Vermeil knocked out a dragon and it makes Cheryl suspicious. Lilia says she plans on exposing Vermeil and it makes Cheryl comment about how Lilia likes Altos. Lila blushes hard and denies it severally. Vermeil watches Alto change with other boys in the boys' locker room and it makes them exclaim. Altos walks out of the room embarrassed and repeats what he told Vermeil to do. Vermeil says that she wasn't allowed to change in the hall, so she went into his changing room. Lilia scolds her and says that she went into the boys' changing room. She mistakenly adds how she wishes to see Alto's change and how jealous she is of Vermeil. He warns Vermeil about staying out of trouble in order not to attract the student council. Alto calls them powerful, but Vermeil says she'll send them flying if they come her way. The student council members pass by them in the hallway and Chris notices Vermeil smiling at her mischievously. In the dorm, Alto takes his bath while thinking about the student council members he saw earlier that day. He calls them cool and Vermeil agrees with him. Alto realizes that she's in the shower with him, so he reacts. The shower brush slips off and falls towards him, but Vermeil protects him with her body. She says that she noticed that he is built and it makes Alto blush. Vermeil says that she'll grant him the power to rise above the student council members. At a facility, Chris scolds Rex for losing to an underclassman. The junior with Rex informs Chris that it is a woman. Chris hits Rex for glaring at him and disgracing the dragon riders. She insults his dragon and it makes Rex speak back to her. Chris hits him away as soon as he tells her that he quits being a dragon rider. She sits on her seat and mentions Alto for piquing her interest. At the school clinic, Alto, Vermeil, and Lilia visit Rex who seems pretty beat up. Rex looks at his junior and realizes that he told them about him. The junior tells them that it was his fault that Rex wasn't among the dragon riders. Rex asks Alto how he feels about dinosaurs, and Alto tells him how scary and cool they are. He smiles at Alto and says, it isn't his fault for him being in the hospital. Alto's knots his brows on hearing it. Lilia walks with Alto and tries to talk some sense into him about trying not to be noticed, but Alto tells her that he has made up his mind. Alto and Vermeil walk to the duel arena after challenging Chris. Chris tells them that she'll beat sense into them and summons her dragon. Vermeil kisses him 
and Chris notices the Golden Manor emanating from them. Rex's junior runs to meet him at the infirmary and informs him of Alto challenging Chris for their sake. Alto sends Crystal at Chris, but she burns them down with her finger. Chris calls Alto powerful and fires a flame at him. Vermeil takes in the attack and gets charred slightly. She talks to Chris for going all out against Alto, but Chris tells her that she isn't doing so. She fires a lot of flame attacks at Alto, but Vermeil takes in all the damage. He summons crystals at Chris, but she blasts them all off. Chris analyzes her opponents and wonders how Vermeil manages to take her attacks head on. Vermeil gives Alto all her mana, and he creates multiple barrages of crystals and sends them towards Chris. Chris escapes by leaping onto her dragon. She fires attacks on them, and Alto sends Crystal at her, but she easily evades it. Alto notices her skill in riding dragons. She corners them to the edge of the arena, and asks that they beg for their life. Chris tells them that she plans on sending them to the infirmary like Rex if they beg her, and it makes Alto angry with her. He asks why she looks down on everyone but she says that it's because she is above them, like a dragon. Two student council members watch Chris's duel. The vice president walks off after concluding the victor of the match. Alto sees that Vermeil is hurt after shielding him from Chris. He asks that he put up a wall, but she strongly refuses. Vermeil says he should build up mana and leave her to do the finishing blow. Chris barrages them with fire attacks, but Vermeil tanks them. Chris yells at Alto and tells him that talentless weaklings have insects as their familiars, and it makes him mad. Alto says that familiars are important to their own Owners, and she is wrong. Chris asks that he proves her wrong by beating her in this battle, and Vermeil agrees with her. Alto releases all his golden mana and creates a giant crystal. Chris sees it and fires off an attack to take down the crystal. Alto fired at her. Chris's flame destroys Alto's crystal. She yells at them that the same trick won't work on her twice, but doesn't see them as soon as the smoke clears. Vermeil leaps into the air at Chris's blind spot while carrying Alto. Rex's junior asks Rex why he isn't watching the fight, but he says that there isn't a reason since Chris will win. Alto leaps on her dragon and points a crystal at Chris's throat, which means victory for him. Alto is greeted by a lot of female underclassmen who ask him lots of questions about his recent duel. Lilia gets mad as she watches other girls fan over Alto. Cheryl calms her down as she tries throwing rocks at her juniors. Alto gets called in by Professor Obsidian. The girls dash towards the professor, but he addresses Alto. He warns Alto not to be reckless and pats him for standing his ground. Obsidian leaves and the girls follow him. Alto watches as the girls follow the professor and call him cool. He asks Lilia if Obsidian is her type, but she gets mad at him and scolds him. Rex walks to meet Chris, who is doing manual labor, as her punishment for losing her duel. He asks her what she's doing, and she says that it's a rule she must follow for losing. She bows her head and apologizes to Rex, and it makes him scowl. Chris tells him to thank his junior. Rex collects the broom from her and joins her in cleaning the facility. At night, Alto is woken up by Vermeil kissing him. He puts on the light and tells her not to kiss him casually. Vermeil says that she deserves a reward for defeating his senior and asks if he doesn't like being kissed. Alto says that she should only kiss if she's in love with the person, and it makes Vermeil not worry and tell him that she loves him a lot. Vermeil pounces on him and kisses him. The next day, Alto struggles as he walks to school alongside Vermeil and Lilia. He remembers Vermeil saying that she loves him a lot, so he tries to get rid of the memory. Alto asks Obsidian if a demon can fall in love with a human. He teases Alto for being romantic and informs him about women who bore demons. Obsidian says he isn't sure if succubi and incubi actions are being motivated by love. Alto asks if a succubus can be interested in a man, but Obsidian informs him that it'll be because of the man's mana. Alto looks worried as he eats his meal in his dorm with Vermeil. She notices his mood and asks what's wrong with him. He tries hiding it at first, but later asks if she likes him because of his mana since she's always taking it. Vermeil laughs at him and hugs him. She kisses him, and he realizes that she didn't touch his mana. She reminds him that she is only allowed to kiss someone she loves, and gets mad at him for being the only one to kiss him. She wonders if he likes her since he has made the move before. Vermeil brings her lips close to his, but he pushes her away after being so embarrassed. Alto and Vermeil glow as they walk through the school hallway. Alto sees Obsidian leaving his office and rushes over to meet him. He apologizes for the strange question he asked Obsidian the day before, but Obsidian corrects him and says it's part of his job. He asks Alto what made him come about the question, but Alto just says that he was curious. He asks if Alto has someone special, but he shyly denies it. Obsidian advises Alto before leaving him. A while later, a student who was invited by Obsidian comes into his office. She hugs him and declares her love for him. Obsidian pats her head 
and tells her he knows while holding a strange syringe. At night, in the female dorm, a student's room was found frozen. The next day, the vice president discusses with another student council executive about Emma Abilene being the fourth victim in their current year. He reads through her records and sees that she is a silver square that specializes in ice magic. Jessica tells the vice president how it took five people to take down the ice door of the girl using hammers. Jessica informs Shinuji, the vice president, how their president must be suffering from the news. He notices how Jessica is obsessed with the student council president and tells her that he'll try his best to look into the case. Jessica leaves the council room while Shinuji looks at the pictures of the victims. In Alto's dorm, he measures Vermeil's height and it makes her ask what he is using the equipment for. Alto tells her that he measures his height every day and it makes Vermeil realize that he has a height complex. He writes the report about Vermeil based on the homework given to him by one of his teachers. The report involves him writing about Vermeil's height, weight, things she likes, and her daily activities. He tells her that he'll be measuring her and she undresses. Alto reacts but she brings him closer and asks that he measure her properly. Outside the window, Lilia watches them with her familiar. She tells Cheryl, who is with her, to be quiet. Cheryl asks if it's okay for them to be at the boys' dorm, but she says it is since she'll be going into Alto's room after using her invisibility potion. Lilia brings out a spare key to Alto's room, and it makes Cheryl wonder how she managed to have it. Lilia uses the potion and walks into the dorm unclad. She enters Alto's room and stands by his books. Alto moves close to her side to pick up books and nearly touches her. Vermeil says that he has grown recently to to move a step closer to his goal. She congratulates him for defeating Chris, who is a gold square. He thanks her and says that it felt like Chris was going easy on them throughout their battle with her. Alto feels that if Chris had come at them seriously, they'd have lost. He encourages Vermeil and promises to win all his duels with her by his side. Vermeil gets up from the bed to go shopping with Alto. As soon as Alto reaches the anteroom, she picks up the pen and writes that she likes Alto in her report book before joining him on his way out. Chris is beaten up by Rex, who appears to be stronger than her. She wonders how he got so strong. Rex remembers the first familiar he summoned to be a gigantic egg. He thought his egg was a dragon, so he happily took care of it. He met Chris, who adored the size of his egg. She looked happy while saying she couldn't wait for it to hatch. Alto and Vermeil go shopping. She sees sweet snacks and asks that Alto buy them for her. Alto picks up groceries and checks his purse, only to realize that he doesn't have enough expenses for her. He tells Vermeil that he'll get her the dessert later, but she sits and pouts like a child. He asks if she'll wash her plates and clean the bathroom, and she agrees while hugging her knees. Alto sighs and agrees to buy Vermeil the sweets. She gets up, hugs him, and kisses him in front of other students. Alto stops her and asks that she shouldn't do it in front of other students. She realizes that he is shy, so she kisses kisses him again, but this time, to take out his mana. A student interrupts them and breathes heavily. They realize that it is Rex's junior, so they listen to him. Rex's junior asks that they save Rex. At the factory, Rex beats up Chris and insults her. She sees that something is wrong with him for his strange behavior and fires her flames at him. Rex walks out of the flames unscathed, and it shocks Chris. Dinosaur parts growing out of him. He kicks Chris and says that beating her doesn't make him feel better. Rex easily defeats her and asks if that's all she has to offer. The junior runs with Vermeil and Alto to the scene. Rex sees them and throws Chris away. He says that he has to pay them back for what they did to him, and they saved him the time of looking for them. Alto picks up Chris, but she mutters to him to run. He wonders who did this to her, and Rex says that he was the one. Alto looks at him sternly, and it causes Rex to get mad at him. He summons his dinosaur and tries charging at Alto, but the president cuts it to bits with her sword. Elena, the student council president, walks to Chris and wonders how she lost badly to Rex. Rex gets up to fight some more but collapses, and it makes Chris run towards him. Elena sees Vermeil looking sternly at Rex and asks if she has any knowledge relating to what happened, but Vermeil says she doesn't. The next day, Rex is at the infirmary and the student council holds a meeting concerning the case. Shinuji says that they've learned the situation to be a result of someone else's involvement. Chris gets up and leaves the student council room angrily without heeding Jessica's call. Jessica wonders why Chris is mad since Rex was the one who punished her, but Shinuji informs her that Chris loves being rough with her toys but dislikes when others mistreat what is hers. The students receive letters informing them about the bronze certificate exam. Lilia is happy and tries to snap Alto's mind back to reality. She reminds him that he should focus on passing the exams. Her main objective is to be on the same level as Rex when he wakes up. Vermeil informs Alto about how tired she is and that she'd like to rest. He tells her that he wants to go along with her, but she tells him to study for his upcoming exams. Alto and Lilia realize how strange it is since Vermeil has never been unwell before. He comments on how he noticed her weird behaviors 
ever since Rex's incident. Lilia snaps him back to reality and informs him to study with her. She drools without being able to hide the fact that she wants some alone time with him. Vermeil walks back to the dorm. On her way, she comes across Obsidian. He stops and introduces himself and Alto's teacher. She stares at him suspiciously as he asks her about Alto. Vermeil says that he is the cause of the incidents happening around the school, and it makes Obsidian feign ignorance. She says that she can smell the low tear clinging on to him, and he seems confused. Vermeil warns him to stop his experiments since the power is too much for humans to handle. She walks away, and Obsidian asks if she doesn't plan on stopping him. She says she won't, but warns him not to lay a finger on Altos. Obsidian senses her bloodlust and concludes that she's a demon. He agrees with her point of view of him hanging out with low tears, and she asks that he stop. Vermeil walks away but notices paper flying around. A piece of paper gets close to her and it transforms into Obsidian who stabs her in the neck with his syringe. Vermeil falls to the ground as soon as the effects of the syringe kick in. Obsidian walks to her front and says that she told him to do as he wished. At the library, Lilia gets so close to Alto that he feels uncomfortable. She tells him to undress, and he wonders why. Lilia tries forcing him to undress, but stops as soon as she sees the crest on Alto's hand glow. He senses Vermeil's mana and wonders why it became so dark. All the student council members sense a demon's presence in the school and head in that direction. Alto runs towards the ominous presence. The president heads in Vermeil's direction, but sees a paper heading her way and cuts it. She looks closely and watches the talisman reattach itself. The talisman multiplies into many and speaks to her. They surround her and a voice tells her that it won't allow her to pass. Vermeil transforms into a full demon and screams uncontrollably. Obsidian laughs at his achievement. She swings her hand and it levels a field. Obsidian marvels at her strength. He creates magic around his hand to trade blows with Vermeil. Alto runs out of the school hallway while looking for Vermeil. Obsidian drags a chain attached to Vermeil and yells that his research finally paid off. Alto sees Vermeil as she struggles. Lilia catches up with him and asks asks who the demon in front of him is. They see Obsidian holding the chains of the demon, he sees them around and shows them the chains on his hand. Obsidian uses the chains to make Vermeil submit to him. Alto doesn't understand what is happening, so he asks Obsidian what he is doing. Obsidian looks at him and informs him about the liquid he created inside the syringe he injected into Vermeil. He admits to trying it out on some students of the school and how it was difficult for them to wield their powers. He informs Alto that he is the one behind all the recent happenings in their school. Alto watches as Obsidian maltreats Vermeil. His heart races, and his crest glows. Obsidian makes fun of him and declares to be a greater master than Alto, but Vermeil snaps the chains in his hands. She launches her hand at him, but Alto jumps in the way to stop her. Vermeil impales Alto's chest with her hand as a result of his sudden interference. Vermeil sees herself in a cold, dark sea, but a door opens for her, and she sees Alto stretching forth his hand at her. Vermeil realizes what she has done and grows into a scarier demon. Obsidian becomes terrified of her and tries fleeing, but Vermeil tries attacking him. Alto leaps on her and tells her to stop. She snaps back to reality and asks why he stopped her. Alto replies that he did it for her sake, and also because he is her master. She becomes unclad after the effect of the drug wears out and watches Alto tall to the ground. Lilia freaks out once she sees Alto's body on the ground. She gasps and asks if he's dead, but Vermeil tells her not to worry and kisses Alto. She puts her hand on his wound and restores it with golden mana. Obsidian cannot believe his eyes. He tries rejecting what he just witnessed. He wonders how a demon like Vermeil was able to take control of her state and inject himself with the syringe. Obsidian transforms into a hideous monster with eyes all over it. He stands above the girls in Alto and calls his form the Demon Hybrid. Obsidian says he was only able to achieve this form thanks to the hundreds of low-tier demons he fed the monster. He assumes that he can crush Vermeil since her rampage has stopped. He transforms his hand into a drill and attacks Vermeil, but she destroys it in a single hit. Obsidian fears her strength and tries escaping into the sky, but he gets taken out by Chris. Vermeil catches up to him and smacks him to the ground, leaving him unconscious. Chris grins and flies away on her dragon as soon as she sees Obsidian unconscious. Vermeil lands quietly and speaks to herself. She says that she won't kill Obsidian after Alto risked his life protecting him. Alto regains consciousness, and Lilia dashes at him. She leaps on him and sobs because she thinks he won't make it out alive. Alto pets her head and tries calming her down. He realizes that his wound has completely healed and looks for Vermeil. Vermeil sees him, but feels guilty for what she did to him earlier. The talisman that prevents Elena from heading towards Vermeil stops. Later that day, Alto informs Vermeil about how his injuries have been confirmed to be healed by the school's nurse. He notices how Vermeil is keeping distance from him and tries reaching out to her. She blames herself for piercing his heart. Alto says he is alright, but Vermeil explains the condition as to why he is alive. 
She tells him that his heart only beats because her mana has been knit together with him. She apologizes, but he doesn't get why. Vermeil explains it better to him by saying that he is sharing her heart, and if any of them dies, they'll both die. Alto hears this and cries to her because he realizes that she will eventually die in his human lifespan. Alto speaks of the rumor he heard about Elena. He heard that she fought against a co-conspirator of the incident. He mentions that Obsidian was arrested by the Ortigia city guard, and how the mysteries got solved momentarily. Rex wakes up in the infirmary and sees Chris resting on the bed next to him. He smiles after realizing that she cares for him. The students in comas all wake up and feel fine. Alto and Vermeil have to share mana regularly. He notices how Vermeil stopped talking to him, so he asks her what's wrong. Vermeil explains that she shouldn't be around him. She calls herself a vile, ugly monster, but Alto disagrees. Vermeil plans to take responsibility for what she did by giving him mana to feed his heart. She believes that it may take decades for the heart to get used to Alto, and once it does, she'll be out of his life for good. Alto gets mad at her when she says that it'll be better for them for her to go back to a book. She sees his mad face and tells him that they cannot live their normal life together anymore. Alto kisses her and she pushes him off. She asks what he is doing but realizes that he didn't touch her mana. Alto shouts at her for thinking he'd be scared of her. He pins her to the wall and tells her that she is his familiar. She nods in agreement and he storms out of the room. Vermeil recalls her conversation with Alto some nights ago about how kissing should be done with people one is in love with. She blushes after realizing how much Alto loves her. Vermeil watches Alto sleep and recalls her conversation with him earlier. She tries touching his lips, but he calls for her while he is asleep, and it startles her. The next morning, during class, the female students feel bad after realizing that Obsidian won't be teaching them again. Alto sees the guys mourn and thinks that they like Obsidian, but they shout at him and ask why Vermeil isn't joining them in class. Alto comes up with an excuse and says that Vermeil hasn't been feeling well lately. He recalls his conversation with her about giving her space to think. Alto thinks about what to buy for her to make her happy. Vermeil stares at the shore, and Lilia walks up to her. She speaks to Vermeil and confirms that she's a demon. Lilia says that she got the news from Alto, and always suspected Vermeil of hiding something. Vermeil apologizes, but it makes Lilia feel bad so she tells her not to look at her that way. Lilia tells her to stop apologizing, and it isn't a big deal if she is a demon. Vermeil is shocked, but Lilia prees further to know if she did anything to Alto these last few days. Vermeil remembers the kiss Alto gave her and replies to her. Lilia feels frustrated, but tells Vermeil that she will leave her be just this time. Vermeil wonders if Lilia isn't afraid of her, so she asks her about it. Lilia confirms that Vermeil doesn't suck blood, and tells her that she doesn't feel threatened at all. Lilia calls her an idiot, and asks why she is sorry about being a demon. She tells Vermeil not to bother worrying about what she is born as. She says what matters is if a person is good or bad, and her feelings for Alto. Lilia hits her on the heat and tells her to lean on him some more. Lilia's familiar goes over to Vermeil and hugs her on the cheek. Vermeil thanks Lilia and calls her a good person. Alto goes home and doesn't find Vermeil anywhere. He looks for her, but she enters. He hurries towards her and asks if she feels alright. Vermeil smiles at him genuinely and says that she is home. She apologizes to Alto for being distant from him and thanks him for saying kind words to her. She tells Alto about how scared she is of hurting him if she stays with him, but she says that she wants to be with him. Alto seems relieved after hearing hearing her speak. He says that he was scared that he forced her into saying what she did and wasn't sure if she was happy to have him. Alto walks to her and asks that she lean on him sometimes. He asks that she mention anything she needs and he'll do it for her. He calls her attention to the crepe and donut he bought for her, but she says that she wants to kiss him. Vermeil kisses him, and it makes Alto wonder if that was what she wanted all this while. He wonders how different it is, since they kiss all the time. But Vermeil asks that he kiss her. She explains how she went to the waterway earlier that day, but couldn't stop thinking about him. Alto kisses her, to fulfill her wish. The next day, Alto and Vermeil prepare to go to school. He sees her in her uniform and realizes how small her shirt is for her. He complains about how he'll nearly die of embarrassment and says that they'll shop for new clothes later. They head to school together. At a faraway place, Two people are shown with one of them speaking into a talisman. They appear to have defeated the monks in the temple. The female among them speaks to the boy in a hoodie about how Obsidian's research could have earned him their rank if he had been able to present it to the world. The hooded boy disagrees and says that Obsidian's research won't make people master the art of magic. A monk runs to attack them, 
but gets knocked out easily. The two figures happen to be Platinum Square holders with Iolite's title revoked. In the Academy, the boys stare at Vermeil's chest and it makes her wonder why. She says that she sticks out more than before now that she wears the student uniform. The boys dash to Alto and thank him for giving them the chance to see Vermeil in their uniform. They see some other students who act confused so Alto asks his class rep what the fuss is about. The rep informs him that those students cannot decide which outfit looks better on Vermeil. They get back to their seats and Alto remembers that they have the bronze square exams coming up. He signals to Vermeil that they should prepare for it. Outside the classroom, in a dark corner where students don't pay attention, Vermeil kisses Alto. He tells her not to do it in school, but she informs him of how she needs mana more than ever since they plan on participating in the bronze exam. Alto and Vermeil walk back to class and they see Lelia. She asks where they've been since class is about to start. They look at the door of their classroom and see students gathered around. The student council members enter their class and declare that they'll be taking Alto Goldfield into their custody. In the student council room, Alto and Vermeil sit as if they are going to be interrogated by the student council. He calms himself down and assures them that they do not know anything concerning what happened to Vermeil. Alto asks Elena why they are here, and she apologizes to him for her inability to prevent his injury during the attack that happened recently. She tells him that she lacks information about what happened and who she fought on that day. She informs them of how Obsidian escaped from the Ortigia Arcane Jail. She asks that they give her information about what happened since they fought Obsidian. Alto relaxes and feels safe, but Elena looks at him sternly and asks if he is hiding anything from them. Two of the student council members pinned them down as soon as Elena asked her question. Alto tries denying, but Vermeil asks that he tell them the truth. Alto informs them that Vermeil is a demon and it shocks the council members. He apologizes to them for not informing them and asks that they expel him so far as they do not harm Vermeil. Alto tells them that he'll oppose them with all he has if they try to harm Vermeil. Elena tells him that she doesn't have the intention of harming any of them and they won't inform the teachers. Jessica opposes, but Shinuji agrees with Elena. Elena reassures Jessica that she can just be heed Alto if she wants, and she'll take care of them. Vermeil asks Elena what she plans on doing, but she tells Vermeil that they are free to do as they are pleased. Elena asks Alto if he'd like to join the student council. Elena informs him of how he is contracted to a demon and how he won against Chris in their duel. She cajoles Alto into joining the student council to prove their intentions. Lilia freaks out when Alto informs them that he'll be joining the student council. Marks and the other friends congratulated him. Lilia smiles and encourages him. She plans on surpassing him in the upcoming bronze exam. Vermeil notices Alto's mood as soon as she gets home and asks him about it. He says that it's due to the student council finding out about her being a demon. Vermeil informs him that she doesn't mind if they know about her identity, but she tells him to be wary of Elena. Vermeil says that Elena might have beheaded Alto's head if he turned down her request. She tells him that Elena isn't normal. Alto says that he wishes he were stronger to be able to protect Vermeil from the student council members. He says that he plans on getting stronger to protect her from danger. She walks up to him and unbuttons his shirt. Vermeil says that she plans on making him stronger so they wrestle on his bed. She wins him, and he feels embarrassed. Elena meditates in front of a statue and recalls Alto's words about Vermeil. She smiles after realizing her goal and beheads the statue in front of her. Alto and Vermeil walk to school in the rain the following day. He enters the student council room as he accepts that he is now a new member, but sees the student council ladies dressing up. He gets punished a while later by Jessica, but Elena tells her to let him go. She says that it's their fault for not locking the door while they change. Jessica can't take the fact that a man has seen their nearly naked figures before their wedding days, and it surprises Elena and Chris with how traditional she is. Elena tells them the reason she's gathered them all to the room. She shows them a talisman and asks that they examine it. Chris takes the talisman and examines it. Elena informs them about how the magic from the talisman doesn't match anything recorded in the Bank of Magics. They analyze the talisman and discover that the magic formulas inside are more complex than they've ever seen. They conclude that their enemy is a Platinum Square. At another hidden facility, Iolite and his other Platinum companion enter and meet up with Kohakumiya, another Platinum Square. She greets Iolite and asks if he has broken the paper doll he gave her, but he ignores her and looks into the giant transparent tube that houses a giant creature. Iolite explains to Kohakumiya why it took him time to rendezvous with her. She asks if Heisval the Platinum High Priest finally gave in to him and did Iolite's bidding, but Iolite tells her that he killed the priest. He wishes her good luck with the demon parts, and he sees two photos hanging 
and picks them up as he leaves the facility. Alto spaces out and sees a little girl crying in a strange land. He snaps back to reality as soon as he hears a strange voice beckoning to him. The strange woman in white stretches forth her hand and asks him to pick between two choices, one being righteous and a path of justice, and another that benefits the little girl, even though it's a path of destruction. She floats towards him and asks him to pick. Alto concludes that the girl is Vermeil before waking up. He looks at Vermeil who is fast asleep and goes to his table to study. She wakes up and sees him studying. Vermeil asks that he rest, since she heard that half of the student body will pass the exams. She knows Alto to be a top student. Alto worries about the practical aspect of the exams. He says the student council is also pressuring him to do well in his bronze exam. He recalls Chris threatening him not to fail. He realizes later that Vermeil is unclad and tells her to put on some clothes. Vermeil laughs at him and says he shouldn't be studying if he is worried about the practical exam. She drags him and he falls on her on the bed. Alto's cheeks are on her chest. He flushes, but she kisses him either way. She tells him that she's going to drain him of his mana throughout the entire night. The day of the exam arrives. Alto double checks to make sure he didn't leave anything required for the exams. He sees the book Vermeil was sealed in and goes through it. He drops it as soon as Vermeil reminds him to get ready to leave and he leaves. They leave their school and head to the venue for their exams along with Marx and his friends. Alto looks at his hand and sees how brimming he is filled with mana. He says that his training with Vermeil must have paid off. Marx notices other students from other schools looking at him, and Cheryl explains that it is because their school is a top-tier school. She says that 50% of their school pass the bronze exams, unlike other schools where only 10% of them pass. They arrive at the venue and see a lot of students gathered to take the exam. Alto sees a crystal orb with a flame in it. Colonel Pharynx of the Royal Mage Corps addresses them as their proctor for the practical exams. He tells them that the crystal in front of them is for measuring their mana, and to do that, they have to supply mana through the crystal to increase the flame. Other students hear this and see it as something that they can easily do. Alto looks at the orb and says that this test won't be something easy. He steals his resolve and Vermeil reassures him. Pharynx calls the first candidate to the stage to measure his mana. The first student places his hands on the crystal and tries pouring his mana into it, but the flame doesn't increase. Another climbs the stage with his familiar, a beer, and they both pour their mana into the crystal, but nothing happens. A monk trees it, but it doesn't increase. Alto and his friends see that people are having a hard time passing the exam. Lilia gets called to go on the stage and she walks there with confidence. She summons her familiar and pours her mana into the crystal, and it increases the flame size. Pharynx congratulates her and calls her the top scorer so far. Lilia celebrates with her friends as soon as she leaves the stage. Another student from another school is called and he tells her to watch him. He places his hand on the orb and ignites the flame inside. Cheryl tells Marx that they can't let themselves be outdone by other students. She ignites the flame during her turn. Mark struggles to increase the flame for a bit. Pharynx and the exam scorer note that Ortigia students are performing well. Pharynx says to her that if Ortigia only has these sets of students for them this year, then he'll be disappointed. Alto, the last candidate, is called to the stage to measure his mana. He and Vermeil walk to the crystal. The examiner tries stopping Vermeil, but Pharynx tells her not to since in Alto's record he is told that she's his familiar. He says that he has never seen a human familiar in all his proctoring life. Alto touches the crystal and analyzes its magic formula. He goes around it and sees how it changes. He calls out to the proctor and asks if he can apply his mana from anywhere and the proctor agrees with him. Pharynx notes how the crystal is a specially made mana conduit. He talks about how the location where people apply mana on it matters a lot. He sees that Alto has a keen eye, and he is happy that he is better than the rest. Vermeil tells him not to apply his mana from there, and he agrees with her. Alto walks to where mana application is the most difficult to apply and places his hands on the crystal. Pharynx wonders why he left, but gasps when Alto applies his mana to the crystal. The flames in the crystal turn silver, and it surprises the examiners. Vermeil walks over to Alto and tells him not to hold back. Alto notes that supplying the crystal mana is difficult, but not as difficult as supplying Vermeil. He supplies more mana, and the crystal breaks into pieces. Alto realizes what he has done and apologizes severely to the judges. He asks if what he has done has led to him failing the exams, but the proctor corrects him and says that he passed with flying colors. The examiner scolds the proctor for telling Alto immediately. Alto becomes happy as soon as he hears the news and runs to meet his friends to celebrate with them. Proctor notes that a gold square wouldn't be able to break the crystal, and a platinum square will find it tough to do so. He smiles, and it makes the examiner ask him what's up. He says that what happened in front of them is the reason he likes working with younger mages. Alto and his friends have their lunch outside the exam venue, 
They congratulate Alto and wonder why his case always seems to be different. They speak of how their next obstacle is the written exam. Lelia asks Marx about his secret weapon, but he says he'll be using it in the written exams. He brings out a pencil that has the letters A-E labeled on it and calls it his secret weapon. Cheryl informs them of a Platinum Square who had perfect scores throughout all his exams. They wonder how it is possible. Vermeil hugs Alto and says that he had a perfect score on the practical exam. She encourages him to have a perfect score on the written exam to be on the same path as the perfect scorer. They encourage themselves and prepare for the next exam. Vermeil and Alto kiss to transfer mana in an alleyway. She supplies him with mana despite Alto saying that he doesn't need it for the written test. They talk about the rules of the written exam as they walk back to meet their friends. Alto notices a boy who passes his side and remembers him to be the one who challenged Lelia in the practical exams. The student uses the restroom and speaks about how unpleasant he is with the Ortigia students. Iolite greets him but he ignores Iolite. He tries walking past him but gets stabbed by Iolite. Iolite picks the student's name tag and claims to use it. At Ortigia Academy, Jessica faces Elena in fencing. She charges at Elena, but she easily sends Jessica's sword flying. She tells Jessica about how she has improved and encourages her to work hard. The girls have their bath, and Jessica talks about Alto. She talks about her fear of demons and how she suspects the Platinum members to be involved with Alto. Elena says that she finds Alto and Vermeil's relationship amusing. She wishes for their bonds to be true. Jessica asks why Alto would allow Vermeil to give him her heart. Elena tells her that Alto is in love with Vermeil. Elena tells Jessica that things called miracles do not exist, hence they are named that term. The bells ring, and they realize that they are late. Elena wishes that Alto does his test well. Altos and Vermeil run to the event of the written test. He complains of not being able to resist her charms. Alto realizes that familiars aren't allowed to take the current test, so he tells Vermeil. Alto checks the paper he is given that indicates his seat number and goes there. Iolite sits beside him and wishes him good luck in their tests. Vermeil sits outside as she waits for Alto to finish his exam. She says she's bored and wonders if she can find something sweet to buy around. She hears two students walking away from the center and talking about how hard the written exam must be. She smiles and says to herself that Alto won't have any problems in passing his exam. She recalls how studious he is to the point that she feels like he is obsessed. She wonders why he pushes himself so hard, but then remembers his goal. Vermeil blushes and whines about wanting the exam to be over. Alto skims through the questions and sees that he won't have problems with them. He looks to his side and sees Iolite sleeping. Alto wonders who in their right senses sleeps during exams. He changes his focus and plans to answer the questions as accurately as possible. Alto answers the questions and notices one of them to be too difficult for his level. Iolite wakes up a few minutes before the end of the exams and makes Alto doubt that he can do anything. Iolite reads the questions and finishes them before Alto. He sees Alto battling with a question and moves over to help him. The examiner warns him and he goes back to his seat. Alto wonders why Iolita behaves recklessly. Iolite tells him that there isn't any point in being careful, since the exams will get cancelled either way. Alto tries asking what he meant, but the guard runs inside and interrupts the exam. He tells the examiner that a student was found dead in the restroom. The examiner counts everyone present and notices Iolite not to be a student. Iolite compliments the examiner for noticing too soon and summons a golem into the exam room. Vermeil senses the commotion and heads there. Iolite sits on the golem and tells everyone how the tests remind him of his old days. Alto asks who he is, and he tells Alto that he is his enemy. He calls Alto a demon master. The examiner creates multiple magic circles, but Iolite uses the golem to knock him out. Iolite picks up the examiner with his golem, and Altos concludes that he was the one who rescued Obsidian from the prison. Pharanx leaps and kicks the golem. He destroys a chunk of the golem's body and rescues the examiner. Vermeil jumps in through the window and attacks Eolite, but he easily negatives her magic. Eolite commends Pharynx for being able to damage his golem's armor, and Pharynx says he recognizes him. Pharynx calls him Iolite of Heaven's Will. Pharynx speaks of how Iolite is the youngest age to be promoted to Platinum Square. Alto remembers what Cheryl said about a Platinum member who has perfect scores across all exams. Pharynx informs Alto about the rumor he heard about Iolite's magic. Alto hears Lilia being carried away by the guards. She screams and refuses to be evacuated, but they carry her. Iolite tells all of them that they know they cannot defeat him. He creates a huge vine with magic and makes his golem into an artillery. Outside the exam hall, Lelia struggles with the guards and forces her way back into the building. The guards arrive with backups and try chasing after her. As soon as they enter the building, they are sent outside. They discover that the building is covered with transference magic. Inside the exam hall, Iolite takes out a lot of the people who fight him and calls himself invincible. He grabs hold of Vermeil to prevent her from moving. He calls them weak and believes that Koakumiya and the gang should be able to take Vermeil out on their own. Alto, 
who has been badly beaten up, gets up and shouts at Iolite to let go of Vermeil. The crest on his right hand glows golden, and he walks towards Iolite. Alto summons stronger crystals that break the golem of Iolite into pieces. He frees Vermeil. Iolite sees how strong Alto is, and summons multiple artillery golems, but Alto takes them down. He dashes at Iolite, but Vermeil yells at him not to. Iolite holds Alto by the collar with his artillery, and informs Alto about his plan to destroy the world. He tells Alto that demons aren't good, and it causes Alto to get mad at him and break the hold of the artillery. Alto dashes at Iolite, but Iolite grabs him and pins him to the ground. Vermeil transforms into her demon form and lunges at Iolite. He sees her and ties her with chains. Iolite creates a key and tells them to give everything they've got if they plan to be serious. He uses the key on the chains binding Vermeil, and she gets knocked out. Iolite tries leaving, but Alto holds him. He tells her to get away from Vermeil. Iolite kicks Alto's face, but he gets up. Alto says he is Vermeil's master and he won't be letting Iolite take her. Iolite scratches his head and tells Alto that he is starting to annoy him. He says that he plans to leave him alone, but this time around he'll eliminate him. Iolite jumps away from Alto and creates a golem that fires a beam at Alto. As soon as the beam leaves the golem, a book leaves Alto's bag and intercepts the beam. Alto sees that it's the book that Vermeil was sealed in. An apparition comes out of it and explains herself to Alto. Alto remembers seeing her in his dream. She calls herself the beginning of mages. Altos concludes that she was the one that sealed Vermeil, but she tells him not to be so quick to blame her. The spirit tells him that Vermeil was the one who asked to be sealed, so she assisted her. The spirit moves over to Vermeil and tells Alto that Vermeil's trauma is what is holding her back. She asks if he is ready to accept her for who she is, and he agrees. Alto tells the spirit that he has strong feelings for Vermeil, and he plans on standing by her side no matter what. The spirit hands Alto a key and says that he entrusts Vermeil to him. Iolite tries stopping them, but Alto is transported into Vermeil's memory. He asks the spirit where they are, and she tells him that they are in Vermeil's memory. Alto worries about Iolite, but the spirit assures him that the memory world is detached from time and space. She warns him that if he cannot save her, then his mind will be trapped in the memory world forever. The spirit tells Alto that they were at Ortigia 550 years ago. He realizes that Vermeil has been alive even before Ortigia was founded. He sees a little kid running while holding a braid of flowers. Alto sees that it is Vermeil. Vermeil runs to meet a sister. She hands over the braid of flowers to the sister and places it on her head. Vermeil laughs happily with the sister. Alto sees that she is happy, but the spirit informs him that the happiness Vermeil felt then and the one of now aren't the same. Other children run and hug the sister. The spirit tells Alto that the people around Vermeil are her family. She says that they aren't of the same blood, but they are one happy family. Inside the orphanage, Miel tells Vermeil not to rush her food, but she ends up choking. She compliments Miel's stew, and it makes her brag about being good at everything. Vermeil tells Miel that she made sister a flower crown just like she taught her. The sister wears the crown to dinner, and it makes Miel tell her that it isn't a necessity. Sister corrects them and says that Vermeil made it for her especially. Lynn and Kate ask Vermeil to make crowns for them. Vermeil finishes her food and asks for seconds, but the girls tell her that there are no seconds. The spirit explains to Alto that Vermeil and her family lived in a rundown abbey on the outskirts of the town. She says they were poor, but always smiling. The spirit calls these moments the happiest moments in Vermeil's life. At night, sister combs Vermeil's hair and Vermeil talks about her horn. She asks the sister if she's a bad person, and the sister disagrees. Vermeil asks the sister about demons being bad, and the sisters say that some demons do bad things. Vermeil wonders why she's being so nice to her since she is a follower of the divine being. Vermeil tells her that she heard from Miel how demons are the enemies of the divine being. The sister ties up clothes around her horns to hide them, and says to Vermeil that she cannot hate her since they are a family. Sister adds, that she won't allow anyone to get in between them, not even the divine being himself. Alto is surprised that Sister knows that Vermeil is a demon. The spirit says that the sister was one of the few kind people who knew Vermeil's identity and still liked her. Alto asks why Vermeil chose to be sealed, and the spirit tells him to prepare for what's to come. The next memory shows Vermeil being stoned by the children of the town. They call her bad names because of her horns. Alto gets very angry at them, and it surprises the spirit. She asks that he shouldn't watch the next memories. Miel sees Vermeil being bullied and yells at those kids. The kids run away, Miela looks closer at Vermeil and sees that she has horns. She is shocked, so she backs away a bit. Vermeil tries covering her horns. She cries and apologizes to Miel for lying to her. Miel steals her resolve and hugs her. 
she assures Vermeil that it'll be all right. The next memory shows the people of the town casting stones at the orphanage. They shout that they bring out the demon. Sister and the kids stay indoors, as the banging gets louder. Miel gets mad and wonders why the noise doesn't reduce, but Sister tells her that it is because the rumor of Vermeil being a demon spread across the town. She assures Vermeil that she will be safe. Alto asks why the townsfolk are so mad, but the spirit tells him that it is because of the plague that killed some of them. They blame the plague on the demon girl, and ask that the orphanage kick her out for them to execute her. Sister comes out to tell them that the plague isn't Vermeil's doing, but the villagers do not listen to her. Miel overhears the villagers screaming at the sister and saying that they'll enter the church and force Vermeil out. She grabs Vermeil and tells her to run for her life. She cries and says that she is sorry that she can't run away with her. Vermeil understands Miel and thanks her for being her big sister. She escapes through the back door and runs out of the church. She falls and overhears the villagers talking about how they plan on torturing her family for her whereabouts. Vermeil changes her mind and decides to go back to save her family. When she reaches the church, she sees their bodies being hung from a tree. Vermeil cries as she remembers how Sister used to tell her about how the Divine Being loves her and he'll protect them. She feels betrayed and wonders what her family did to be killed by the town's men. They see her and rush at her to eliminate her, but she rages and transforms fully into a demon and burns the town to the ground. A while later, Vermeil cries and apologizes for what she has done. Alto sees her and the spirit tells him about how the plague bothering the town was lesser than the destruction caused by Vermeil. She asks Alto if he is ready to accept her. Alto lands beside little Vermeil and she sees him. She asks him who he is. She cries and says that she did the unforgivably by destroying the town and burning everyone with it. Alto hugs her and tells her that it's okay. He says she did her best. Little Vermeil transforms into her adult form as she cries in Alto's arms. Alto realizes the feelings he has for Vermeil. Vermeil cries and says that she held all these bad deeds within her because if she did, she would be hated. Altos tells her that he doesn't hate her. He says he isn't the only one that feels that way. He mentions her family and says that they love her. Alto holds her hand and tells her that he'll be by her side even if the entire world turns against them. Alto says that he wants to be with Vermeil forever. He kisses her, and her chains break. They appear back in the exam building, and Alto confesses his feelings to Vermeil. He promises her that she won't be alone again, and she agrees with him. Alto kisses Vermeil in the memory world, and the chains binding her break. The memory world shatters, and they land back to where they were. Iolite sees them, and his key turns to dust. He smiles at them, and asks that they go all out in their next attacks. Iolite snaps his finger, and his golems merge and transform into a horse-like monster. He talks to Alto about how evil demons are and how powerful Vermeil is. Iolite says that he plans on using Vermeil's power to destroy the world. Alto interrupts him and says that he doesn't care what people think. He tells Iolite about people not knowing the real Vermeil. He mentions the good traits of Vermeil and talks about how horrible she feels about what happened when she was little. He vows not to let Iolite lay a finger on her. Iolite smiles and tells them that they cannot do anything about the attack that his monster is about to hit them with. Alto and Vermeil hold hands and pour their mana into each other. Alto slams his hand into the ground and makes a golden magic circle. Vermeil pours mana into him, and he summons a gigantic set of crystals at Iolite's attack. The attacks clash, and Alto destroys Iolite's attack and wipes out his monster. Iolite tries creating a stronger monster, but his companion enters and stops him. She tells him that it is time for them to leave, and he asks for more time. She refuses and informs him of how busy it is getting outside the building. Iolite agrees with her and calls Alto the victor of their battle. He walks towards the exit with his companion, but Alto asks him for his objective. Iolite doesn't answer Alto directly, but he tells him that he'll be back to continue their fight. He leaves the exit and Alto tries chasing after him, but Vermel stops him. He sees the spirit beside Vermel and asks if she is present throughout. The spirit confirms his guess. Vermeil calls the spirit by her name, Fatima. Fatima asks Alto if he is prepared for the entire world to turn against him, and he agrees. Fatima entrusts Vermeil into Alto's hands. Alto tells Vermeil that he'll become the strongest mage for her sake, and it makes her blush. Fatima smiles at them and leaves. She restores the buildings to their correct state before the attack. Alto picks up the book, and Vermeil collects it from him and hugs it. She realizes that it was Fatima all along. Lilia, Marx, and Cheryl enter the classroom and hug Alto. Alto spars with Jessica. She easily hits his sword off his hand and knocks him down. She tells him to try harder if he wishes to land a hit. Chris asks that Jessica tap out. She says it's her turn to train Alto and promises to go easy on him 
She wins him in every confrontation, which makes Jessica question if she went easy on him. After sparring, Alto thanks the girls for creating time to spar with him. Jessica asks him why he wants to get stronger, despite being strong enough. Alto tells her that he wants to protect Vermeil. Jessica blushes after realizing how earnest Alto is, and Chris laughs happily at him. Alto wonders if he said something weird. As Alto walks back to his dorm, he recalls the things Chris told him he lacks and firms his resolve to get better at them. In his dormitory, Alto kisses Vermeil, and she informs him of how her chest is throbbing. He asks that she show him and she removes her top. Alto sees how shy Vermeil is and calls it a new side of her that he never knew. Later that night, the two of them cuddle on the bed. Vermeil sleeps behind him and whispers to him. She says her heart started racing ever since he told her that he loved her. She thanks him for accepting her for who she is and for holding her close when she cried back then. Vermeil tells Alto that she loves him more than anything in the world. He says the same thing to her, and it makes her smile. The two of them kiss through the night. The next day, Alto keeps thinking of ways to get stronger for Vermeil as they walk to school. He opens the student council room door, and Elena commends him for his determined look. She informs them about how the recent happenings have caused harm, and that the victims were innocent students. Elena determines to find the root of the cause. Shinuji tells her that she's getting ahead of herself, but he plans to improve the lives of their underclassmen. She hears all the student council members support her. Lilia celebrates as they receive the results of their bronze exam. She looks at Marx and wonders how he passed. Marx tells her that his secret weapon makes no mistake, and it got him the perfect score in the written exam. Lilia looks around for Alto but realizes that Vermeil must have spirited him away along along with her. Vermeil takes him to a place with less crowd to kiss him. Alto tries complaining, but she doesn't budge. Vermeil says that all familiars offer their all to their masters. She pins him to the ground and kisses him. At this point, we have reached the end of our video. If you like it, do not forget to put the like button and subscribe for more new videos.